Our class is now. Um, so we have this problem to do. Uh, let's see, a few uh, housekeeping items. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, I did set up your Google Classroom account uh, during the weekend here. I just haven't sent you the invite. just want to tell you the invite will be sent today. And so this is second semester because your grade starts over again. It does not continue. So in high school, in elementary school, middle school, right? Your grade sort of continued, right, through the year? And, oh, okay, that's right. <laughs> and so... <laughs> That's funny. So let's go with it here. This is uh, exercise 10. And I, I think we covered this all the way when we did the appendix. Do you guys remember when we were doing the appendix and the quadratic formula? Um, whenever you have a square root answer, um, we understand the squared answers always come in pairs. We good? Just that's sort of what we have to know and see. So real quick here, if I were to, this is kind of like the um, the understanding of this little guy here. Oh, no, I just make it into something else. Boom. If I were to solve this, if I were to solve this equation, x squared plus seven x plus five, right? This is kind of the background for this question. If I did the quadratic formula, you guys know the quadratic formula. Give me negative b plus or minus. Ooh, see that little plus or minus right there? That means whenever we solve quadratic equations right away, we have this little plus and minus. And the plus and minus is always sitting in front of what? It's the square root. So seven squared minus four times one times five, all over two times one. So notice whatever this problem is gonna be, it's gonna have this little, what is that gonna be, 20, 29 over two? So when we solve polynomials, if you have a square root answer, you know it's gonna have a little plus and minus in front of it. So if you know that x is equal to square root of two, if you know that is one of the answers, you also know that you have an x equals negative two to follow, are we good? But let's go for it here. So first things first, uh, what I did is last time I subtracted square root of two from both sides, because this is going to be my factor right here. But I'm going to be writing this out. Whoa, that's interesting. Uh-huh, that'll wake you up. Okay, that's a factor, are we good? So let's go with it here. So let's finish up the last two problems here. All right, what do we do first? First, anybody? Math. What's why? Oh, that's right. It's got to be around here, huh? Tristan, what are we doing? I think we put the square root of two on one side, is that right? And we make our little division thing, Majiki, is that right? Whoa, hold on. It's magic, you go. Okay, so what we do is we bring down the coefficients, right? The numbers in front of the x's here. Do we have all our degrees represented, first of all? No. Where is the third degree? It's right in front. Wait, oh, yeah. The next thing. No, I'm looking at the answer of the uh, quadratic formula because we didn't plug the x cube. Ah, gotcha. Yeah, this was just to say that whenever you have squared answers, you're going to get plus or minus of it. So that's to keep in mind. But. As far as bringing this down for synthetic division, we're gonna, one, two, negative two, negative four, right? Yeah, one comes down from here, two comes out from here, negative two comes down from here, and negative four at the end. We're good to go there. We're going to be multiplying by square root of two. Oh boy, let's see how this work, works out. It says that this guy is a factor. It already says that this, this is a solution. So what do we know the remainder should be? Seven. Nope, not seven. Four. Not four. Zero is cool. I was close. You're almost there. Almost there. <laughs> Boy, how do we know the remainder is zero? Yeah, because on the uh, on the problem itself, it says that x is equal to negative two and negative oh sorry square root of two and square root of two is a solution. You know if it's a solution, you know it's going to be a remainder of zero. Okay, let's go with it. Yeah. So what do we? Uh, we think we take the one right and bring it down. One is brought down because it's adding to nothing. There's kind of like a, a invisible zero right over here. Boom. 
My recording. I make sure. Yeah, I'm recording. Okay, cool. So we're going to multiply back up. So remember, it's adding down. And it's multiplying back up. So one times square root of two makes square root of two. And now the not so fun part begins. Two plus square root of two. It's two plus square root of two. They don't come together. You got to keep them separate. Oh, it's so annoying. So now, what is square root of two going to multiply this guy to be? It's going to just be zero, right? Same way multiply. Multiply, yeah. So off to the side, we're going to do something like this. What is square root of two times two? Seven. Nope. It's going to be two root two, but close, Camille. What is the square root of two times square root of two? It's just positive two. So that guy's gonna go right over here. It's gonna be two square root of two plus two. Okay, what's the square root of two square root of two plus two minus two? Perfect, these guys are gonna cancel themselves out. I'm left with the two root two. And now the question is, what is two root two times root two? Oh. Isabel says four. I agree. Look at this. That little two is an outside two, right? The answer is zero. It has to be. That would be the square root of four, which is just be two, and we get ourselves a four. Perfecto. I don't know how I feel about this. I don't know. I don't that was a lot like of two. it. That's a lot of twos. Uh huh. We're not even done yet here because it says this. It says oh. once you get there. Uh, we want to factor the rest of it completely, and this is kind of where, this is kind of where this uh, was where we're going with it here. We're trying to factor it on x to the third polynomials, x to the fourth polynomials. Yes. Now we got to write out. Can you guys write out the leftover expression? Now can we write out the leftover expression? We went from x to the third power, right? So we know this guy's x to the second power. So let me erase all this good stuff here. When are we gonna have our first text? I don't know. Man, mm -hmm. well, God is real. <laughs> So leftovers, leftovers, or the uh, expression that's left, right? We went from x to the third on x squared. Okay. Talk, talk to me. This little one right here is going to be x squared. This one is going to be the coefficient for x. So we've got to put in parentheses. It's going to be parentheses 2 plus root 2 times x. And then this one right over here is going to be the one right at the end. So it's plus 2 root 2. So that's the expression that's left. Yeah. Can we put in something for x just for fun? Yeah. Not yet. Oh, just a bit. Can it be seven? Oh, we could. Okay. What is your obsession with seven? That's a good number. I don't know. It's a lucky number. I have so many lucky numbers. Here's the next little seven. part. Wait, aren't those omens? Are you almost? So what we gotta do is we gotta take the synthetic division of that one right there. To bring it out some more. So after this, since we're this is we're at x squared, after this we're gonna finally bring it down to just x by itself. We're good. It's gonna be a linear form. So let's go with it here. Uh, da -da -da -da. So our next setup is since uh, root two was an answer. What else do we know is an answer? Negative root two. Negative root two. So negative root two on the outside. Wait, we're doing it again? Uh-huh, with a negative because or two. Because doesn't want to do division again. Right. Not words. <laughs> so the first term is one coefficient. The second coefficient is two plus root two. And the third one is just two root two. Okay. If we know that negative root two is a solution, what this should be the remainder? Zero. 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 Oh Good job, Camille. You got this so one right. Write that down. You can write this down. Absolutely. Yeah. At the end, you can write it down. Okay, let's go with it here. See if you guys can do it yourself. 
bring down the one, multiply by negative root two, and see where we come to. You walk around, see how you're doing. And see if you get that zero for the remainder. That's the whole point here. See if you can get zero for the remainder. Cool. And once you've got the zero for the remainder, can you write down the, the expression that's left over? Ooh. Yeah. Oh uh, the one comes down, which is the one. The gentle one. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. You're doing okay? You're doing great. Okay. That was nice. Okay, cool. And once that is set, can you guys write the factored form polynomial? It could be a. He's about almost there. Yep. Okay. So let, let me go for it because this is what I got. So the one came down. We multiply by negative root two, gave us a negative root two. The root two is canceled, leaving us with the extra little two there. Is that right? Multiplying by negative root two gives us that, and we get ourselves a zero. Uh, I think I came by, I think two people got x minus or x plus one. It should be x plus two. We good? So that's the leftover right here. So question is this. Now we already got that one? Are we good now? Okay, so now this polynomial, which was x cubed and blah, blah, blah. Can we write down the factored form? Yeah, here's what the factored form. First form, first, um, remember our first solution was square root of x, right? Or square root of two, right? So that means the factored form, let me move this because this is no fun to do it here. Oh, it's x plus two, you are right. All right, take your back. Thank you. x plus two. So the first, because square root two was an answer, you know that x minus root two was a solution, it was, or a factor, we good? And these guys always come in pairs. So if x minus root two is an answer, you know that x plus root two is an answer as well. And then we're gonna bring this one down here. So with a, you know what, let me get the same pin color. I think this is the same pin color. Let's see, we're close to it. Ah, it was closer. So boom, there is my little plus sign. Okay, guys, are we good? Is There's your factored form. Okay, why is this cool stuff? Is because in algebra one, the only ones that we could do were x squared, right? You you can do this right here. You're able to solve these and factor them down. We good? But you had to be an x squared, and we had uh, we could either factor, or you could either use or quadratic formula. Good one. Those are only two options, right? That was it. That's all we had in algebra two. With this little process, with synthetic division and understanding the remainder is zero. Now we moved on to x to the third. In fact, this is the only process we have for x to the fourth, x to the fifth, x to the sixth. But and isn't so that like a, uh, cubic yes, uh huh. Yep, for a cube, there's a cubic formula. It just, as Owen said, it gets too complicated. Why use it when it's just so super complicated? We're listening to Owen now? Uh, sometimes. <laughs> okay, are we good? At <laughs> and I got one more for you. A exercise number 11. Uh huh. This one now has a one plus the square root of three. So the factor thing is x minus <laughs> All right, so let's let's go with this. So I have a solution. One solution is one plus root three. I know that to be a solution of this equation. So, so I think I put the one plus root three on the other side. Bring down my synthetic division symbol. And what do I put for my coefficients? 
a one, a negative three, um, zero, and two. Yes, how can we put zero? Oh. For X. Yeah, we're missing the uh, column for X. The X column is missing, so we need to fill it in with a zero. It's not remainder of zero, is it? It should be remainder zero by the time it's all done because one plus root three is a is a solution. So bring down the one, boom, and we're going to multiply one plus root three times one, which would give us one plus root three is perfect. Whoa, okay. Yeah, what is negative three plus one plus root three? I think so. Yeah, you can only add the one and the negative three together. The root three store stays by itself. Oh, negative no. two plus root three. Oh boy. Uh huh. So I'm thinking we could still have to multiply. So maybe off to the side, I think we're going to have to do this. Off to the side, one plus root three multiplying a negative two plus root three. Let's see what answer we get right there. Uh, Hmm, okay. Let's see. One times negative two is negative two. Yeah. Doing this way. One times root three is just a root three. And I got a root three times a negative two, which makes a negative two root three. And then yeah, root three times root three is just gonna give you three. I no one. Yeah. Negative two one minus hey, one minus root three. So that's on my multiplication from one plus root three and a negative two root three. So that means it goes up here. So I got myself a zero on top, one minus root three on the bottom. Um, all I know is this has to equal negative three. It's gonna equal zero. <laughs> I'm just gonna write negative two. I'm doing math. <laughs> Okay, so one oh. plus root three times a one minus that's root three. Isn't that the difference between square, or no, the square thing? So it's just you square both of them and you're good. Ooh, can't square it. Um, but it's like that thing where it's like the perfect. Isn't the answer one? Isn't the answer negative two? Negative two, yeah. Um, I guess you could you could square each of the ends. I guess, yeah. yeah you said it that it's way. Just like the thing where it's just a negative two at the end. Uh huh. Yeah, because the you see a plus sign here, you see a minus sign here, and the numbers are exactly the same. You know, the middle is going to cancel. So one times one is one. You can just square that one, square that one, be done. If you did it the long way, you would have got a negative root three here, a positive root three here. Now you can really see how they're going to cancel each other, and that becomes a minus three. Every okay there? Every okay with it being a minus three? Where that comes from? Root threes are gone. One minus three is a negative two, and voila, negative two comes in as a zero. That's cool. Oh, bummer. Abe is right. So hold on. Abe, if... Why did you have to open your mouth? I was going to do it again anyway. No. <laughs> I just needed someone to blame it on. So, real quick here if one plus root three is an answer, what also is an answer? One minus root three is an answer. Charlie, are we doing okay? Uh, write down what's left over. Uh, Isabel has a question. Do we have to write out the uh, the leftover part? If you want to, but really we're just going to do the second long di synthetic division. So why why write it out if you could just take these numbers here and just put it into your second synthetic division part? So one plus root three is an answer, therefore one minus root three is an answer. And then we're gonna start the process all over again. Take the, in, take the result that you got from the first synthetic division and write it as numbers for your second synthetic division. It has to be, uh-huh. I wanna go back to the simple math where we have the multiplication sheet. Yes, with like the factor. When math was easy. <laughs> so bring down the one. This is this is not bad. One you're multiplying by one. This is not bad. This is not bad. Well, you don't know math. <laughs> See, you do not. That's why I'm thinking of Well, <laughs> I just want to know when am I ever gonna use this in my future life? Oh, I don't know. Next year, probably. I'm not saying next year. Next year. Nothing. 
So one yeah. one times that is going to be that. No. And if we do this, let's see, what do we get? No, I was not even. I was not even. Just negative one. Negative one times uh, one minus root three. Negative one plus root three. And zero, yeah. but close to seven. Um, okay, and at that point, that's done. Now, let's see, can you guys write for me the factored form? Now, this is gonna be tricky here. Can you write down the factored form of what's left over here? So the, the factor that's left over from this guy's x minus one, right? That's an easy one. You're not ever gonna plug in a number for x. What is the factor of x? Yeah, we're gonna plug in a seven eventually. Why seven? Why put it with one? Why is it so much easier? Seven, seven. Dylan, doing okay? Keeping up with it? Okay. Um, let's see. So that uh, the x to the third polynomial that we had before, we're gonna factor it down. Our only little problem is this: we have to write them in terms of factors. We're good. So our first factor, remember that? Our first solution is this one right here. Can you guys write this as a factor, which means set equal to zero? This will look kind of unusual one here. So that's my answer. That's my solution. I'm going to subtract one from both sides, and then I'm going to subtract root three from both sides. So here's my factor. It looks kind of weird at first. This is in factored form. Mm -hmm. Right, you can really go back and multiply all these together. Yes, so uh -huh. that'd be fun. So, remember when we were doing like how many pieces Subtract. of pie there was and how many red apples we did? Subtract one from both sides, so add a root three this time, and then the one that we got from the previous slide is just x minus one, right? Equals zero. That one was already. So why did you plug in? I thought you just plugged in the x and one. Oh, because there wasn't a one in the one. Okay. So you ask point? the question while you're asking to figure it out yourself. No. So it looks kind of okay. weird at first here, but here's your factored form. Here's your factored form for the answer. So we have factored down at that x to the third polynomial. Are we good? Question yeah. Why can't we just? Right, instead of x minus x minus one minus the square root of three and x minus one plus the square root of three, why can't you just do x minus one plus or minus the square root of three? You could. <laughs> yeah, you could do that, but whenever we uh, write out factors, we want them individuated. Okay. Look at the most part. You see that, right? That looks like. Try to buzz. I never even took the <laughs> Sorry, Annette. Go ahead. How many moves you need to? Okay. All right. So let's go back to. All right, and for Camille, we're going to plug in a seven into the original equation. Oh, so, let's see all slides here. We're going to go here. That's there you so go. Much math. I have not so much math. There is so little math in me. Boom. Um, it's inked. So let's go with it here. So seven to the third power. Seven squared plus seven, will that equal to two or will it equal to zero? I don't know. We put a question mark here. Well, what's seven to the third power? 49 times seven. What? Right? Yeah, we need the seven to the third power. Seven times seven is 49, that's squared. So Camille, since you're plugging in seven, I need you to find out that for us. Hold up, hold up. Seven plus three, six. 20. Oh, no, 20. I don't think it's in 20. What's, what's 7 times 4? 
Oh, okay, yeah. hold on. So three, uh, Camille, three forty-three or three twenty-three? Yeah, no, it's forty-three. Okay, forty-nine. Maybe forty-nine times three. I don't know how to start this. Okay, wait. I got you. And then it's minus one hundred forty-nine. Oh no, minus three. Yeah, three hundred forty-nine. Yeah, no, I did two. Wait. One. No, but that's forty-seven. Minus forty-seven. I go one forty-seven. Plus two. One hundred ninety six here. Oh, hold on. Is it? Yeah. We're subtracting, right? No. Sorry, sorry. Wait, hold up, hold up. One ninety six. Oh, it's not subtracting. It's gonna end up being one ninety eight equals zero. Which I don't think is true. And then we can put a slash through there. Okay. 198. Real quick here, co common mistake. Guys, real quick, let's talk about this. A common mistake that students make is right over here. What they'll do is they'll see this as a quick little addition step to do. And they'll say, oh, that's 149. Right? And if it does that right here, right? Notice the subtraction symbol there. And then if you do that, you just you just uh, did the order of operations wrong. That's the problem there. So then if you do this, see, I would have gone there right if we did it that way. Uh huh. If you did it the wrong way, Camille would have got it right. That makes sense. Okay, so for this one, let let me uh, show you guys what to do here. If you guys did it this way, you have to keep in mind of the negative right here. So it's this whole piece right here, and that still be okay because it's not a factor. So that's fine. So if you did one forty seven negative one forty seven plus two, then that would still be okay because then you say to yourself, "Oh, that's negative one forty five." Agreed? Because you're including that little negative piece inside it, and then when you subtract here you will get 198 still left over. So just kind of keep that little negative. You can't, you can't dissociate the negative from the number itself. See, okay. If you plug in one, you get zero. Yes, you plug in one, you get zero. Camille, you are absolutely right. Anybody know why? Because math is ridiculous. No, because x minus one is a factor. Therefore, one should be a solution because we got ourselves a one minus a remainder of zero, that's what we're looking for right now. If you get a remainder of zero, you know that used to be a factor. Okay, let's, oh, uh, yeah, we should start the next section here. We won't be able to finish it, but start it. Uh, one extra little thing that I thought was interesting, uh, Isabel asked last time um, who invented synthetic division. So I was like, okay, let me check it out. Just out of curiosity here. So I went to Wikipedia and I never knew. There's something called expanded synthetic division. Uh -oh. We're not so, that, right? No, this is kind of beyond the classroom. But I thought this was cool. You do two factors at the same time. Uh, this one is you do two factors at the same time plus the uh, uh, plus the coefficient in front. Uh -huh. So it becomes a just a huge division problem without any um, coefficients. And this was kind of cool. This is called compact expanded. Uh -huh. That's funny. Because compact and expanded are the exact opposites. But it's this little uh, triangle you make during synthetic division, and you get your uh, answers on one side and your remainders on the other. Yeah. And then um, that was kind of fun. And the last part with Wikipedia, it said that there was a Python implementation. There's a little code for it that if you can 
here's your polynomial. Click enter and it and it spits out the the stuff. I thought that was kind of cool. Wait, can we do another one of these problems to practice? Oh, we will get to those after we do 2.4. We'll have plenty of practice when we start doing long division. Interesting question. Um, there's a mathematician called Ruffini. I forgot when he. So that technically means it is real. Mm -hmm. All of the yes. <laughs> okay, let's jam. So let's start 2.4. 2.4 is something called complex numbers. We got complex numbers. So we got the word one x to little piece. Remember, piecing this together in 2.5, we're going to put it all together finally. Why are we doing long division, synthetic division, it's remainder theorem, and factor scary, theorem? Because it sounds like it's going to be scary. Nah, not at all. Probably not. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Not at all. OK, let's talk about some stuff. This one, we'll kind of need to sort of think through as we do this. <clears throat> so real numbers, real numbers that we have. You OK? <clears throat> um, let's talk about it. So we have something called real numbers in mathematics, and not as opposed to fake numbers, but real numbers just mean that they actually are numbers that are on the on the x axis. That's what a real number is. So 3.7. Is that a real number? Yes, because I can find 3.7 along the x axis. We good? Uh, square root of two, which is about one point. Actually, I should put over here. Square root of two, is that a real number? Sure. Yeah, because if you punch in a calculator, you click square root of two, oh, enter, yeah. and it's going to be approximately 1.4. We're good? Fake numbers. Uh, not opposed to fake numbers. Real numbers are ones that go along the x axis. Then we have something called imaginary. So real and imaginary, that's oh, the big difference. Oh, no, we were talking about these. Whoa. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> I'm glad. That's, can you put it back, Camille? Okay. Imaginary numbers are ones that will not fit on the number line. Well, Camille gets back to where she's at. So it's going to be the square root of a negative two. Notice this one. So square root of two, you cannot know square root of negative two, you cannot put that on a real number line. It's impossible because there's no way you can multiply a number times itself to get you negative two. And so for a long time, what happened to mathematics is we just discarded those numbers as nothing. And then came along Dr. Cardano. Yeah, Dr. Cardano said, you know what? Instead of just leaving it as just that right there or just discarding it. What he said, I'm going to label something. And so he came up with the word imaginary. And he just said, you know what? If there's a negative inside the square root, I'm going to put a little i on the outside. And the positive value is going to stay inside. Why isn't there something like half down between a negative and positive? Uh, you can't, because there's only negative and positive numbers. Well, zero would be there. I don't know. OK. So he came up with this whole concept of imaginary numbers here. And so let's, by definition, a quick definition here. Definition is i is equal to the square root of a negative 1. So imaginary numbers, you have this little definition of i. So if you have a, a negative inside the square root, we can always pull out that negative inside of square root and call it i. So one little thing that is a consequence, one thing that formulates because of this is this right here. If that's true, 
If I were to square both sides, what happens here? So the square goes away. The square goes away, yes. Uh -huh. We have I squared is equal to negative one. Another little formula we'll probably need later on right there. Whenever we see I squared, whenever we do these problems here, we're always gonna write it as negative one. Now, Dr. Cardano did not know this, but when he did this, he formulated it. Um, this was uh, the mathematics behind electricity and how we think of electrical engineering right over here. He did it in the 1500s. Uh-huh, he did it in the 1500s. We, electricity, when we started harvesting electricity, in 1900, I believe, right? Late 1800s, right? The light bulb, uh huh, Edison. What happened was people looked back and said, oh, that's so cool. We actually have all the math for it already. And all the math worked out. It was kind of cool to sort of see that happening. So there it is. So let's, let's put some definitions together some more here. So now I think we're ready. So what is a complex number? A complex number written as a plus bi uh, a plus bi is in standard form where a is the real part and B is the, I'm oh, sorry, BI, sorry, I should say BI, is the imaginary part. Oh, that's right. Thank you. <laughs> the front row gives me more anxiety than I already have back here. Okay, so if you ever wrote the number, <laughs> if you ever wrote the number seven, there it is. I just wrote down the number seven. Whoa. If you think of it as just a real number on the number line, that's it, then it's number seven. If you sort of see the complexity of the number, right? So writing the number seven really is like this. It's really, there's an imaginary part to every single number, but that imaginary part has a zero coefficient. Are we good? <laughs> and how about some other stuff here? What do we know about if you just write down seven? What else do we know about seven? Well, like, what's the exponent on seven? One, right? We don't ever write it down, but there's this little guy here. Is seven also a fraction? Yeah, over one. So notice we have all these sort of little pieces here, right? Why does it make seven so long? I know. And let's see. And then we live in three dimensional space. Wait, then why don't we write it down? So we could actually put an X y and z coordinates right afterwards here or at least vectors there well, yeah wait but then that would make it seven again no that would still make it seven just with a lot more information inside well, what if wait no huh <laughs> well because if you have an x y and z and then if that equals one two and three then that doesn't equal seven if you're talking about if you're talking right. about dimensions if you're talking about three-dimensional spaces yeah then you put in that values if you're graphing it and stuff. Okay, class, are we good? Let's do some examples here. Examples are um, three plus four i. There it is. There's a complex number in your hands. We're good. Another one, negative seven plus, I don't know. I'm, I'm throwing out your numbers here. So negative seven plus 12i. There it is. You can also, so whenever you see this little real part over here, then this imaginary part stuck together, it has just become a complex number. Okay. Can we not solve it because I will negative one. So uh, say again. Can we not solve that because I will negative one? How would we not be able to solve Sure. That? And so, so Dr. Cardano, 500 years ago, right? Before him, people would just discard it saying it's nothing, right? Since he started putting a label on it, then people started saying, okay, let's solve for it. Let's keep it on the side. We don't know what it means, but let's keep it on the side, right? 
And so then eventually became how we think of mathematics behind electricity. So that, that's kind of what happened here. So you can't just shove it off to the side. Okay, so let's do this real quickly here. Uh, first things first is uh, exercise one, write the complex number in standard form. So write the complex number in standard form. So just real quickly, A would be something like this, three plus a negative root 16. That's radical form because we have a square root inside there. And B would be, Oh, okay. A, B, and C. Let's do those here. So let's write in standard form and let's make them equal to each other. Let's see what happens there and we'll keep on going. So in answer for A, is this little part right here. So what is the square root of negative 16 going to make? Again? No, because it's, the 16 is still inside the radical. Um, the I gets to as the negative gets to go out of the radical, it becomes an I, right? So the three is still good. Um, the 16, square root of 16 is? Four. Four. And then because it was negative, we have ourselves the, the I yeah, afterwards. Like, Are we good? Okay, are we good there? And this is called standard form. Standard form just means you have the A part, which is the real part, plus the imaginary part with the I next to it. So this one, oh, remember how we said about I squared being just a negative one? Yeah. So let's do that here. So if you have an I squared, you're just gonna transform it into a negative one. Ah, yeah, let's go for it here. So by definition, I is the square root of a negative one. So if you were to square both sides, you're going to get I squared being, these guys cancel each other out. So you have this little interesting idea. So negative one is really the same thing as I squared. Now, whenever you see... For B, for B, the original problem is this one right here. Negative three I squared plus that seven I. Okay, so if I squared is negative one, that means becomes three plus seven I. Now that's in standard form. It has a real part, has an imaginary part stuck together. And then square root of negative four. Uh-uh. You can write, yeah, you could write zero plus two, zero because there's no real part plus, and let's get this here. It's not going to be a four, it's going to be a two because we still need to do the square root of that four. But because it was negative, some people say in mathematics, some people say that has to be the answer because you want the little real part and the imaginary part. And some people say, you know, we already know zero is just going to be zero. So you could write it like this. We understand that's a complex number. We understand the real part is zero. Good. That's kind of how we think about it. I will accept both, no problem. Okay, and with a little bit of time left here, let me jump to exercise two. Does the book have both or just one? Yeah, I did not even, I think it's probably gonna do the second one. That's probably gonna be the second one. And we got to do one more here just to get equality here. So now the question is this. 
find real numbers A and B so that the equation is true. So A and B, I think we have enough time for A and B. So this one here, the easy one, then the more difficult one here. So whenever we talk about real numbers and equations, right? Well, if you go over here, you say to yourself, you know, X is equal to 17, right? Notice there's only real parts over here. So in with the real numbers, it, it's almost like it's too simple to even talk about. You say, yeah, x is equal to 17. Of course it is, because that's what it says, right? In this one, since we have two parts, the question is, is how, what numbers go in for a and b so that a plus bi is the same thing as 7 plus 3i? Well, we have a real part, right? That's easy. So a would have to be 7, if that's true, and b would have to be 3 for these guys to be equal to each other. We good? Because you're kind of doing two parts here. The difficult one is this one right here. How about a plus 6 plus 2bi is equal to 6 minus 5i. So can you tell me what a and b would have to be in order for these to be equal to each other? Well, we're going to take the real part and we have to solve it. So a plus six is equal to six. Good there, are we okay there? So we're taking the real pieces and we have to solve for the real pieces. Then we're going to take the imaginary pieces, solve for them. So it's just this piece here connected to this piece here. And if that's the case, a would have to be zero for that to be true. And I am G, the imaginary part. 2B is equal to negative 5 <clears throat> divided by 2. And there it is. So if A is equal to 0 and B is equal to negative 5 halves, then those two will be equal to each other. Are we good? And you can, can see it if you want to, if you just want to punch it in. If you punch in 0 into the first one here, A plus 0 is going to be 6. If you punch in a negative five halves into the B value, notice the twos cancel, and you're left with what we have on the left-hand side. Are we good? Okay, and I quit here for today. So next time we come back together, we're going to uh, add, subtract, multiply, divide these complex numbers. and take powers of them, and then eventually solve quadratic equations. Stopped. Stopped.